Hi there, welcome to Unscripted with me, Grace. It's a pleasure as always to have you here with us. Um, what can I say about today's show? Today's show is one of strength and resilience. Um, here's a disclaimer, there may be lots of tears in this show, but it's one that will hopefully encourage you, give you hope, and um, in this season, I think it's something we need. So please stay right where you are. Welcome to Unscripted, and I hope you're staying well and safe, but I'm glad to see you Let the show begin. Hi there, thank you so much for making time for us. Like I said before, our guest today is one special lady. Jackie, um, your story is one of strength and resilience and I am honored to have you on the show. I'm glad to be here. Thanks thank you for, for coming. Me. I know I can't greet you or hugs, so. Yeah. We're um, living in- Air hugs. Uh, air hugs. <laughs> We're living in very strange times. Isn't it? Yeah. May all this be over soon. We hope you're keeping safe and positive at home, of course. Um, so let's start with who is Jackie, where did you grow up, what are your fond memories, but first who is Jackie? If mm -hmm. you could describe yourself, what do you do, what do you love? I wear mini hats, uh, Grace, but uh, today uh, allow me that uh, I'll, 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 I'll wear the mommy hat, I'll speak as a mom, and uh, it's one amazing gift that God has bestowed upon me. Mm -hmm. I've been born, raised in Nairobi. Uh, close-knit family, big family, yeah. uh, raised uh, with both the nuclear and the extended family. We were raised with uh, very loving parents, uh, very strong parents. We did not have much, but we had enough. Mm -hmm. But uh, we did not lack. Uh, they ensured that all our basic needs were met. And uh, I really remain forever grateful. Uh, sadly, lost to my mom, uh, who battled with cancer and succumbed on uh, June 18th, uh, 2012. But uh, grateful that uh, she saw most of us, uh, uh, she left most of us when we were adults. Uh, she got to see a number of us, yes, uh, get married. Uh, she got to meet uh, a number of her grannies. So for that, we are grateful to God and uh, may she rest in peace. We celebrate her, we celebrate her. What? lessons are you carrying with you as you mother your children, Miss Jackie? Oh. My mom was such a strong mom. She was such a strong woman. Uh, and I think uh, some of the strength through the journey after for me I was, was from her. Uh, strong resilience. She helped. She taught us uh, that no matter what we we came through, or no matter what we were dealing with, we just had to keep at it, uh, fight, put up a fight, and, and, and keep hope alive. And I think that has carried me through many, many dark days and many dark seasons. And her favorite lines were, God is good all the time. And she said it in Luo. Uh, and now I move to mother tongue. Yes, I bear seche duto. She loved to say that. And on, on dark days, on difficult days, I remind myself on that, that uh, God is good and all the time. I can only imagine, I mean, you're a young girl uh, at 14 years and you discovered you had sickle cell anemia. How was that journey like for you? How has it been like for you? And of course, your mother, you know, walking that journey with you, how was it? Um, I used to get jaundiced a lot. My, my eyes used to turn yellow a lot. Uh, joint pains and uh, was a weakling at times, uh, but we didn't know uh, until around about the age of uh, 14 uh, when one doctor thought to run some tests and uh, uh, it was discovered that uh, I, I had, I was a sickle cell trait and uh, despite being a sickle cell trait, though I wasn't, mean, I wasn't meant to sickle, but I, I tend to to get uh, the jaundice, I, I tend to get the joint pains. Uh, my blood count at times uh, goes, goes low. And uh, yeah, I, I had to readjust my lifestyle, uh, taking a lot of fluids, uh, uh, ensuring that uh, e eating healthy or missing any of my meals, uh, taking my folates, uh, I'm on folic acid. Uh, every day, uh, taking my folates, 
And uh, with time, I got to learn when I was uh, when I was sickling, even though I'm not meant to sickle as a sickle cell trait, mm -hmm. I, I could see when my eyes are turning yellow and uh, uh, it was a clear sign that I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling well or I'm not doing well. Let's get switch gears a bit and when life changed for the better or I guess you starting your own family began mm -hmm. and you met your, um, your, your husband. Tell us about that, um, that season. Uh, Matt? Uh, I, I usually joke that I'd say he found me because he met me at my doorstep. Uh, really? Yeah, uh, he came to pick his cousin who uh, was a former schoolmate. Uh -huh. And uh, one thing led to another. And as we say, uh, the rest is history before I knew it. Right. And uh, I found myself walking down the aisle at quite an, a young age. Mm -hmm. And uh, God blessed us uh, with uh, 10 years. I married young. Uh, How old were you? I was uh, 20. Five, uh, and uh, God gave us ten years. I might passed away uh, later. Uh, at uh, after ten years. What do you treasure most about the ten years you had together? When you talk about starting a family with him, uh, what stands out to date for me? Uh, of course, there's there's a rest where I could I could choose to speak of what was between us. I, I had a soulmate, uh, but I hadn't. Awesome, awesome father to our children. Tell us about the first pregnancy and your baby. Uh, our first baby came uh, uh, a year after. Uh, difficult pregnancy, very difficult pregnancy. But uh, I thank God for a safe delivery. Uh, our daughter was born uh, on 3rd September 2006, a year after, after our marriage. When did you discover something was wrong? or different, yeah. She grew up as a normal child, and the normal ailments uh, uh, never had uh, any big issue or no sign of disability mm -hmm. at all. But I, I, I thought she was quite a quiet baby, and I remember sharing with my mom one time, and um, my mom asked me, at two years, where do you expect this girl to be all chatty? Uh, she, they all meet their milestones at different times. Uh, so I thought to enroll her to uh, a play group so that she would be able to uh, interact with her peers. And uh, on the first week, uh, we were very surprised to uh, receive a call. Or rather, I received the call from school. And it was from the class teacher. It was from the headmistress. And uh, she had a concern, and she said, uh, they had PE, it was game day on Friday, and they said despite uh, blowing the whistle, uh, our daughter kept on running and running, and they had to stop her, and they thought she might be deaf. And I wondered, I asked them, what are you talking about? Mm. Deaf? No. Because uh, you had no signs of this at home? Not at all. She was only two. Uh, Jazzy had learned to lip read, seemed to have learned to lip read pre pretty early. Uh, I could ask her for the remote, she would bring it. Uh, she was saying a few words, yeah, but I never thought, deafness? No. Uh, and so the dad wasn't home. I went, uh, I switched on the telly. I kept on increasing the volume and no reaction. Yeah, no reaction from her. Took her to the microwave, it's beeping. No reaction. And I got very, very worried. Uh, that was a very long night for me. The dad came home, he could see something was wrong, but uh, I, I just didn't know how, what to tell him. And uh, the following day, on a Saturday morning, I, I thought I, I couldn't keep this to myself anymore. I shared the, uh, the news with him. And uh, he also didn't seem quite worried, and he said, uh, we called the pediatrician and uh, we were told we could come in on Monday. And uh, it was a long weekend for us. Uh, but on Monday, uh, things really turned. Uh, the, doc the, the pediatrician did some basic tests. Mm. And I could see from the look on her face that there was a problem. And she quickly told us, you need to see someone called an audiologist immediately. Okay, that's and a specialist. That's a specialist, an ENT speci specialist. 
and uh, we quickly we couldn't wait. We quickly rushed and and tried to push to get into to get an appointment, and we were lucky to be seen. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were told our child needed to to be put to sleep to be done for uh, a major test to determine uh, the degree of, of of her hearing loss. Mm -hmm. And uh, that afternoon. Uh, things took a different turn, you know. Uh, now she's being referred to a severe to profoundly deaf. That's the diagnosis we are being given. And you're wondering, when did this happen? How? What thoughts ran through your mind in that moment? Grace, we were shocked. Uh, we were broken. Uh, uh, Jazzy and the dad had a, a very strong bond. Uh, the dad actually cut her cord. Uh, it was very fast labor, and the dad cut her cord. And uh, for the dad, um, my man, my soulmate who uh, was always ever so strong, seeing him so broken, uh, I was scared. I was worried. And uh, we were told to fit her with hearing aids. Uh, immediately and uh, this would help her a bit and uh, on that week we struggled uh, they're not cheap uh, one piece uh, goes for around about 80 to 100,000 and here we are uh, we are looking at how fast we can be able to to, to get this for her mm -hmm. and she was fitted with her hearing aids and uh, of course, you are hoping for a quick fix. Uh, first, we were told to raise the funds we've, we've managed because the insurance offers a very minimal amount. Uh, yeah, you have to cover the rest yourself. And here you are hoping for a quick fix and you're thinking, okay, once she's fitted with the hearing aids, then she'll be able to, de to, to, to start talking. But lo and to us, that wasn't the case. On that, on that note, let's take a very short break. We'll be right back and hear more about um, Jackie's journey, please stay right there. Wash your hands and come back. The day you found out uh, your daughter had lost her hearing, um, or at least when it was discovered, I have to ask, is there, could there have been a way, now in hindsight, or if you discovered later, can, could this have been detected earlier, um, prevented or treatment? What is the process here in Kenya like? We thank God for the net and we went on the internet, we were both on the net with my husband, uh, trying to get more information and we were surprised to learn that in the developing countries, uh, screening is done at birth and uh, with uh, early screening, uh, there's early intervention and uh, with proper amplification where the child can either now get hearing aids, that's where now we learned about uh, an cochlear implants which uh, are, are, are more sophisticated and uh, give better hearing but it, it, it involves surgery. It has to be done very early. It should be done early because the window period of speech closes in for a child around about the age of uh, three years. Yeah, so early intervention is is key uh, for the church for the child to be able to uh, to develop speech. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, of course it's not just about the intervention. And, and you expect that your child starts to speak immediately, then there's now the rehabilitation process, which involves speech therapy. And they start with learning sounds, and from sounds, you're able to blend. And that's where you s, a, t, and you blend, set, k, a, t, cut. And they slowly start to form words, and with words come sentences and sentences, vocabulary is built over time. Yeah, so it's, it's a journey that you have to be very, very patient. We never hid our child. We, we went everywhere with her. And uh, people stopping you, what's that on, there, on, on her ear? Of, 
the, the hearing aids used to beep, and now uh, uh, the, 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 co the cochlear implant looks like a Bluetooth. Someone asking, is that a Bluetooth? Because it has this... Uh, These are strangers coming up to you. Yes, stopping you so many times. Uh, and I, I, I learned to answer, uh, and, and with no shame. And, and uh, I, I, I asked the doctor, uh, I want to meet other parents like me. And, and he told me there are very many, and, but because of patient uh, doctor privacy, yeah. he told me we can't give you the numbers. So I thought I'd do cards. I wrote out cards. I'm a mom. I made many different, many cards. I'm a mom of a, of, of a, of a daughter who is hearing impaired, who's deaf. I'm looking out for other parents. Yeah, please reach out. These are my contacts. I'd love to meet you. So I left them at the doctor's uh, oh, wow. clinic and they were gracious enough to, to give out to many parents. And I was surprised to start getting calls. And uh, when we got to uh, around about 15, my late husband and I uh, uh, thought of hosting. But to my surprise, on that day when we hosted, uh, the first couple of parents who came in, uh, I did not see anything on their children's ears. So I'm like, is your child deaf? Uh, and so someone quickly removes the hearing aids from their, from their bag. And they're like, oh, you know, it's taboo. Uh, my parents-in-law uh, still have an issue with this. Uh, the stigma about it. It's heavy, uh, yeah? It's really heavy. And uh, of course, uh, there's always the issue. Uh, it's from your side. There's no deafness from our side. Blaming yeah, blaming each other. Uh, I'm grateful uh, that my husband stood very firm uh, for me. Uh, I, I got pregnant again, and the fear, grace, fear was real, and also a very, very difficult pregnancy. And you're hoping against hope. You're thinking, it can't happen again. And it did. It did. How many years apart? Uh, George is nine now. Uh, Jazzy is, is 13. Uh, yeah, the, they have an age gap of around... Uh, About four years. Uh, years. Yeah, yeah. Yet still it happened again. Hoping beyond hope that this would happen again. And around about two years, we started seeing the signs again. And we struggled with going for uh, the test. Uh, we struggled to take George for screening. And... Uh, we realized we were running out of time and we had to take the bold step and have him screened. And again, the same diagnosis, severe to profoundly deaf. What was going through your, your mind and your emotional space? It broke me. It was hard. It was really, really hard. Well, their dad was very strong. He told me, you know what, sweets? We walked this journey. We know how it goes. We can do this again. But for me, I think my biggest struggle was knowing how hard it was to get Jersey where she was. And I wasn't sure I had the strength to do this again. But because of his support, family support, I had to pull myself together very fast. People just don't know how to, uh, to deal also with words. And, and others just openly asking you that, like, really? The second child, uh, the, again, with, with the same disability? It's painful. It was painful. But I quickly embraced myself and learned that comforted myself that he gives no gift that adds sorrow. He gives no gift that adds sorrow. That despite our children having special needs, uh, they're, they're gifts all the same, just differently packaged. And I learned to love on them and to be their greatest support system with their dad. Deafness is not a taboo. It's not a taboo. Uh, there is help out there, and deaf children can be able to lead fairly normal lives. Mm. 
My firstborn now, my, 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 my eldest daughter uh, is, is 13. Uh, she, she's developed speech uh, very strong. I see she also takes over after my mom uh, uh, and, and her late uh, uh, grandma. Uh, so she can speak? My daughter can speak. Uh, she's be able to develop speech. My son has been able to develop speech also. And uh, it's been a journey, not easy, Grace. And when I thought life had given me a real blue, I lost their dad in a tragic accident when George was just three years. Uh, Matt was uh, an architect by profession, but had a passion for biking. Uh, on a Sunday, one Sunday, a day that started out beautiful, went for church. Uh, he was a professional rider, they, they used to race. And uh, he has to go out for a ride. They were practicing. Uh, they had a race coming up. Yeah. And uh, he was out with his team in Tigoni. And uh, I was out with the kids. And we were waiting for him. Uh, he was meant to join us uh, around about midday. And uh, as I called, his phone call, his phone went and answered, which was quite unlike him. With how many calls, no matter where he was, yeah. uh, he would excuse himself and answer. But this took longer, and I kept on calling. But I did not know that Matt was already down. Matt had already passed on. And the fellow bikers were around the phone, and they just didn't know how to break the news to me over phone. But I started getting now many phone calls. and. Uh, some questions were quite leading, where are you? And uh, So from the bikers themselves, they reached out eventually? Yes, and his friends, uh, and uh, one of his close friends asked me that I needed to, to get home very fast. Okay. And uh, Did you suspect anything? I did, no, I did. And, and uh, I, I, I told him, you, you, need to get, you need to tell me what is happening. Is much hurt. How badly hurt is he? Uh, but he wasn't answering me much. He just kept on insisting, you need to get home. You need to get home very fast. As we drove into the compound, I saw the many bikers. And getting out of the car, they met me. And they broke the news that Matt was in an accident and he died instantly. He died instantly. Sorry, Jackie. Hearing those words, what did that... Hmm, what was that moment like for you? I was in harm. Pain was so much. I thought it would consume me. State of total confusion. Asking God, how would this happen? How would you let this happen? We've loved you. We've served you. I mourned. I... For the children. I thought, if this is so hard for me, what about these little children? And I asked for time to break the news to them. The kids were now crying, confused. I took time. Understandably. Did they understand? To let them know. Jazzy and Jean were old. They did understand. Even George, I think. And seeing the kids so broken. Children were so broken. I wish I could take their pain and 
buried for them. I think we'll take a short break. We'll be we'll be right back. Stay right there. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for staying with us, um, Jackie. I feel like my next question is, how do you do it all? Um, only strength and grace and having it in abundance, um, taking care of your children and then losing your, your soulmate, as you call him, in the midst of all of that. Um, how do you do it? Yeah, grace. Uh, I've held on to God and to my faith. Uh, my support system. I'm blessed with an amazing family. Uh, my family has stood by me. Uh, my church has stood by me. And uh, around about that time, uh, around about six months, uh, I joined a widow support group. I'd received many calls from many widows asking me to join, but I just wasn't ready yet. How could I be a widow uh, at this age? Uh, I think the first thing that the support group taught me is that I have to build a very strong backbone. During the funerals, you have very many people. Mm. People speak, we'll be there, we'll stand with you. And that's one of the things that the older widows first taught us, that you have to build a strong backbone because you have to realize that a time will come that you stand, it's for you to stand and be there for your children. How do you do that though? Uh, with the support of my family, I have not shied away to ask for help. Uh, it's been difficult on days like sports day when George cries out that he wants a male figure for the daddy race. Uh, he wants us to, and I, I, I can't do it, and I have to rely on my brothers or, or my siblings to step up. I can't do it alone. Uh, our widow support group, our slogan is His will, His way, our faith, that we've accepted God's will and His way to take our spouses, but we hold on to our faith. And our motto is that we'll be able to live again, we'll be able to heal, we'll be able to grow and thrive. Mm -hmm. And that is where I am at. I turned 40 recently. Okay. And congratulations, that's a milestone. It is. I'm told life begins at 40, and uh, that's my prayer, that God will be able to renew, he'll be able to restore, he'll be able to redeem. He'd be able to redeem the years that I've lost because I feel I've lost a number of years. I can account for a number of years in my life. You had 10 years together. Um, you have beautiful children. What is your hope for the next season? I believe he'd wish for me to, to stand strong and carry on his legacy. Uh, Matt passed away at 43, and I came to learn it's not about the number of years you live, but the life in those years, and he lived fully, and he left a legacy. And I have to carry on that legacy. Uh, these children, right now, I'm all they have. So on days that I can't walk, I crawl. And on days that I can't crawl, I hold on to the father and I tell him, won't you carry me? Won't you carry me? Because I have to work. I have to be strong for them. Even when I'm crashing inside. And I have 
to support them. And sadly, I lost my brother recently uh, in a sudden death also. And it's like it really took me back. And it's like grieving again from my mom mm. to, to Matt and, and now to my, to my bro. But I'm glad that I'm in a better place now. Uh, connected back to my faith. Uh, holding on to God and reminding him that you are the father to the fatherless. The greatest defender of all widows is you, God, in your holy dwelling. Is you, God, in your holy dwelling. I want to speak out to the parents of children of special needs who are very dear to me and to widows. You have to pick up yourself. You have to stand for your children because you are the main support system that they do have. And you can be able to live again, heal, grow, and thrive again. To the parents with children with special needs, celebrate your children. They are a gift from God. And he gives no gift that adds sorrow. I have three deaf children. We have Daniel who came home to us from New Life Home. And many think that the adoption of foster process is very hard, it's not. What led you to that decision? Daniel found us. I think these children, there's a way that they also pick us. We think we are picking them, but they pick us. And as we were giving to the home, we just bonded with him. And we felt he would do better in a home setup. And despite all my struggles, people thinking I was crazy. How can you add on to another struggle and another? I don't want to talk to him, refer to him as a, as, as, as a problem because he's not. We brought him home. And he's brought so much joy to us too. And so that's why I'm very passionate about creating awareness that something can be done about deafness and for those who are scared about adoption. The homes are full. It's up to open up our homes, open up our hearts. Matt used to say he'd wish to have many children. <laughs> I know where he is. He's smiling down upon us. And if I could, I take on many, many more. God bless you, My quiver is full. I am blessed. I am blessed. What I love about you, Jackie, is through it all, you see, you see the blessing. You see um, God's providence and grace and mercy. And um, thank you for bringing that onto the set today, onto those watching at home. Um, how can people reach you if they need this assistance? Because um, this could be your legacy, this could be that purpose that you never saw happening in your life, but here it is. I speak much about the support groups because the support groups have really helped me. Uh, for the special needs children, the deaf, hearing impaired, deaf children, our support group is called Hands and Voices. Uh, you can reach us uh, on Facebook, you can reach us on the main website, our mother chapter uh, is in the US, Hands and Voices chapter Kenya. Uh, our contacts are there, please reach out, we meet often. To the widows, uh, our support group is Taraja Widows Trust. We are also on Facebook, our main slogan is Mjane Inua Mjane. A widow to lift another widow up. Uh, please reach out. Thank you, Jackie.
What are you most grateful for through everything? Grace, through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in him. I've seen his hand. He's come through for me in so many ways. I'm grateful for his grace that has been sufficient on many dark days. I'm grateful to my family for their support, that they've held me and carried me on many dark days. I'm grateful to my church that has given me spiritual nourishment and supported me and reminded me of mama's words that God is good all the time. I'm grateful to my colleagues who have extended grace when I've not been at my best and supported me. I'm grateful to the medics, to the many medics, uh, to the many doctors who have looked out for our children, to the professionals, the speech therapists, to, to, to the teachers who give so much to our children who have special needs, to who extend grace to them and love them unconditionally. I give thanks to them too. And I remain forever grateful. We thank God for a good support system and we wish you all the very best. Like you said, you're now in your, your best years. Your best years are ahead. We wish you all the best. Um, restoration, healing, peace, and joy. May you smile in the years to come now. Mm -hmm. We wish you and the children well. Thank you for sharing your story, for being brave and honest. We appreciate it. We hope to someone at home who's watching. Um, Jackie's story has, has touched you, has spoken to you. She shared her details if you need to reach out. Um, and uh, I guess just a reminder, in this season and always, let's just be empathetic to each other. You never know what someone is going through. So let's keep that in mind as we move forward in life, especially in this season. Stay positive, stay safe, stay well. God bless and good night. See you next week.